I'm going to take a look here at the Taylor rule. The original paper, seminal paper, that uh, opened up this basic framework was uh, discretion versus policy rules in practice. And that was by uh, John Taylor in 1993. And John proposed this framework, which at the time uh, was a kind of departure from a lot of the uh, thinking in terms of how to implement monetary policy, there was a view that monetary policy should be set out in terms of controlling monetary aggregates like M1 and M2, M3. And Taylor suggested that rather than try to control money by using uh, strictly tight controls over money supply, that rather than the quantity of money, we use the price of money as the control variable. So as a kind of intermediate target to policy, we set out the interest rate in terms of inflation and 0 0.5 times an output gap estimate and then 0 0.5 times P minus 2. So if you like the inflation rate minus the target and then this 2 here is like an equilibrium interest rate in the overall process. So uh, that, in other videos, I've tried to implement this using estimating the output gap as the um, as a measure of, if you like, capacity, excess capacity in the economy. So to what degree is there tightness? Is the level of actual GDP in excess of a trend, or if it's below trend, and if if GDP was below trend, that would suggest uh, policy could be accommodated. Policy, if the level of GDP was below the historic trend rate, then that would provide an opportunity to relax policy and reduce interest rates. The difficulty with trying to control interest rates in this particular way is how do we know the trend? Right, so I'm going to take a look at some other papers that suggest an alternative approach here, in particular looking at, instead of measuring directly the output gap using GDP, that the variable that we might substitute in here to uh, estimate capacity in the economy would relate to unemployment. Now, um, this particular rule did actually quite a good job if we take the period um, to, let's look at this again, if we just reduce a bit, the period 1987 to 1992, so kind of the early years of the Greenspan, the Alan Greenspan Federal Reserve, um, the Taylor Rule, we call here the policy rule, so the broken line actually tracks the actual Fed funds rate quite well. Uh, normally amongst monetary economists, this period of monetary policy setting is viewed as quite stabilizing, quite good. So let's have a look at some alternative papers here that suggest an alternative framework where we substitute into the rule, instead of measuring the excess capacity in the economy using output or the output gap that we substitute in unemployment. Okay, so I've done a Google search here and I've come to the Federal Reserve of San Francisco and they have a paper from 2014 or an economics letter publication. And again, uh, one of the issues uh, when trying to implement the Taylor Rule is actually related to finding um, a reasonable estimate of GDP and the GDP trend and the reality is that trend keeps changing so if, if the trajectory for on a, for uh, economic growth in 2007 uh, that was relatively high to what the trend might have been if generated from the perspective of 2010 and that would have looked elevated relative to the perspective in 2014. So the experience of policymakers in real time 
is that the trend that they're using keeps altering. And with the benefit of hindsight, from 2014, you could have predicted the fairly significant drop in GDP, or you could have you you have the benefit of knowing that the GDP dropped fairly significantly in the period uh, just around the crisis, and um, your estimates, historic estimates of the uh, GDP uh, output gap would also be affected as a consequence of this. So one way of dealing with this is to use perhaps uh, instead of the um, inflation rate, sorry, instead of using the uh, output gap that we use unemployment. Okay, so we could take a look at what's the level of unemployment over the period. Now there are revisions to unemployment, but those revisions in fact are probably less serious and fundamental than revisions that take place relating to GDP and uh, the trend rate of GDP. Uh, this would not be the same for um, for uh, NARU, right? Non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment or the natural rate of unemployment. Um, okay, so uh, how do we progress this? Uh, we could consider other uh, papers in this area. Um, now, one in particular that does give a fairly specific um, type of policy rule is one here by uh, Fernanda Nescio. And uh, they, in the paper um, here, we have for the euro area, but it's another formulation of the Taylor rule, different to the original Taylor rule. But it says, look, the, the policy rate uh, or the target rate of for the policy rate should be 1% plus 1.5 times inflation minus 1 times the unemployment gap. Okay, and that comes on the back of the original Taylor rule. And then um, it's developed into a version policy interest rate should respond to deviations of inflation from its target and unemployment from its natural rate. And this is going back to a 2010 uh, Rudebusch uh, paper. And a simple version of this rule is that target rate 1 plus the 1.5. Now, um, we could try to to run some basic regression estimates where we set up the Fed funds rate. I'm going to go with not the ECB target rate path, but actually the Fed funds rate. And I'm going to see how this rule um, or how this policy um, uh, rule or, or guidance uh, compares against uh, actual policy implementation for uh, the Greenspan Fed. So I have some uh, data, but where would I find data in this area? Well, a good place to start would be the Federal Reserve um, of St. Louis, so the FRED database. And we might look for unemployment, right? And we could take quarterly or we could take monthly, and I might just go with monthly. So a starting point here would be uh, we could just take the civilian unemployment rate and do we want it as seasonally adjusted? So I'm going to go with seasonally adjusted and that's not hugely sinister option to go with here. And we can uh, download that data. So normally if I just click on, it'll bring me through, give me some kind of, I can eyeball the data and we have data here going back to 1948 and right up to 2018. Now one of the interesting features here when we do observe the unemployment data the, there seems to be spikes so there's periods when the unemployment seems to come down kind of slowly and then we get to uh, a very low level and then it sh seems to spike up and come down low level then spike up and again here the same thing comes down to relatively low level and then very quickly we get in these gray areas 
we can see that there is very dramatic change in the level of unemployment. So the most recent experience for the United States was when, when we go back to 2007 period, 2008, and then suddenly within the course of two years, we go from a rate of less than 5% to a rate in excess of 10. And uh, of course, uh, we can imagine how pressures coming from political institutions influence or can colour the thinking of policymakers who have responsibility for setting interest rates. Okay, so if we want to download our data then, and, and this data I think is monthly, let's say we want the quarterly data, then very simply before we download, we can come in here to the settings and just change from monthly to quarterly and come back out. And then we can download our, our data as an Excel file or as an image PowerPoint. Well, we're going to go with Excel. And then we'll open up this file just to take a look at what's in there. And of course, when we open up, we can see that the it's January and then uh, April and then July and then um, October. So it's quarterly data that we have quarterly seasonally adjusted unemployment figures that we have. Now there's a little bit of smoothing going on, but that smoothing is probably justified because um, some unemployment is linked to off-season uh, type um, impacts, okay, so especially the tourist industry and agriculture, so on. So we want um, maybe the, it's okay to go with the seasonally adjusted. Um, now if we take the data, I have other data from before, um, I would have had data, let me see, um, I had unemployment data, f this was civilian unemployment rate, percentage quarterly, seasonally adjusted. And then I took uh, inflation data um, for, so I would have adjusted this. F so we have to go to the Greenspan period, which is 1987 to 2006. Okay, so we would be starting around this period, right? And if we take the Greenspan period in terms of um, unemployment, then I would just divide the percentage figure by 100 to convert to a decimal. And the inflation figures I have uh, taken here from the, um, again, Federal Reserve of St. Louis, and the Fed funds rate I've taken from the Federal Reserve of St. Louis. So what I might do here just to get the ball rolling is just delete that. Get rid of the, um, so I'm going to say delete. Okay, and just run that regression again. And if you want to run the basic estimate here. So we're taking this, if you like, construction or more correctly. We're taking this policy rule. Uh, if we estimate for the Greenspan period, which covers the period 1987 to 2006. Okay, so let's take a look here. Okay, so 1987 and it brings us down to 2006 and six okay so i'm going to run a regression here based on this and very simply i take uh, go to data data analysis and i look for regression regression and i hit okay and then what's the input range it's the fed funds rate And then the other two variables, independent variables, are the output, just the inflation rate and unemployment rate. I'm not adjusting in any sense. And then the output range I'm going to put here. So I've got to do that again. Okay, so I'll pause. 
I'll stop the video and then in video two, I'll complete the estimation.